Well, welcome to uh, Sunday Prayer on the 22nd of September, just checking it was. Huh. And uh, we're thinking today about uh, Jesus on the road and uh, particularly him um, bringing a child into the midst to speak of the kingdom and so on. Uh, we're going to begin with a uh, hymn which says that in a way, just like children, we need to come to Jesus without our pretensions, naturally and as we are, just as I am, without one plea. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God. Translation. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do but not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff, scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Uh, 
And so in the light of Psalm 1, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the God who provides for us and calls us to yourself. We thank you that the psalm speaks about when we are rooted um, deep into the uh, uh, side of the stream where, where it can draw up strength and refreshment and health, then we are more truly yours. And although the psalm, Lord, is hard on what it calls the wicked, we know that there are many who have just fallen far from you and have given their lives over to things that do not help them, do not refresh them, do not bring them joy. And we pray that in our life uh, we may be a better example of what it mean, means to live close to the God who loves us. We thank you that that love was seen primarily in Jesus. We thank you for his life, for his death, for his resurrection, for his constant being alongside us now by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we come to worship you today on this your day of days when you were raised, when you sent your spirit, uh, when uh, Lord, we remember uh, in our way as Christians how you rested. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon our Sunday worship today. We pray whether we've been to worship already and come to this, whether this is our worship of the day, that you would come and bless us and keep us close to you. And Lord, right now we pray your blessing upon us as we pray the prayer of the kingdom, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to um, hear now the Gospel lesson from the Lumo Film Group from Mark chapter 9. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Children are people who live in a land made of raindrops and puddles and pebbles and streams, solemnly watching a twig as it sails on a clear crystal pool to an island of dreams. There go a pair who have just built a city of mud, and it's real. They know that mud doesn't look very pretty But ooh, how it feels This little boy greets the snow with a smile That little girl has discovered an isle Made up of pillows One little fellow is friends with the wind 
in the willows all of them children and all our mysterious people i can remember when i was a boy that my bed was a ship that i sailed through the night and i remember the world as a place that was eager and loving and shiny and bright where is the boy who was friends with a rainbow and once rode upon where is that shy and mysterious person oh where have i gone i can remember i once said my prayers but now i stand by while my children say theirs watching them kneeling and i could cry that one day they'll forget all that they're feeling oh what a shame that our children should grow into people and so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight lord our rock and our redeemer amen so here's our short passage and I want to suggest to you that there are three silences in this moment by which I mean not a very positive silence but a silence that's hiding something. In fact the, the last one is not named. I'm being cheeky with the passage and suggesting that maybe this will be a time of silent reflection. Uh, the first one is that in the early part of the passage uh, Jesus uh, is declaring as he does quite a few times in Mark's gospel that the, the son of man was going to come to an end that they weren't expecting that he will be killed and uh, after three days he will rise again it says but they didn't understand what he was saying and they were afraid to ask him so there was a silence because they didn't want to address what was essentially hard news i mean it was good news in it but it's news they didn't want to hear that was going to happen to their messiah so it all went quiet uh, we talk sometimes don't we about the elephant in the room uh, that is often a subject yeah usually a subject or topic or an area you're not allowed to go into uh, that people are not talking about but are all fully aware of and i wonder whether that would have been true here of Jesus and his disciples, that they were worried about him, but they didn't want to address the, the um, frightening news, the, the upsetting news, the unsettling news about Jesus going to the cross. Now, I think we have to ask ourselves this. Um, are we people who shy away from bad news? Uh, from difficult news. Um, my mum used to say she would never watch uh, certainly all of Jesus of Nazareth or similar kind of because she couldn't bear the kind of cruelty of the cross. Uh, so in a sense she wanted a rather more comforting version of Jesus's life and this was too horrible and therefore she just actually didn't, didn't engage with it at all. Um, and that's a way of, of keeping things quiet isn't it if you don't engage with things that are difficult. Uh, I was having a conversation in, in a committee meeting not very long ago and somebody was saying, uh, you know, the thing we don't talk about is the ageing uh, sort of profile of the congregation, meaning, you know, how long have we got? Um, it's a thing that we don't talk about. Why? Because it's difficult, because it's, um, because it's challenging to us. Much like um, there's a long debate, isn't there, about when somebody's ill, do you have a conversation with them about how ill they are or not? And there's much sort of uh, difference of opinion about whether to broach the subject of somebody, especially if somebody's terminally ill, uh, is, is a good thing or not. Uh, well, Jesus knows this and he's aware that he must still say how it is 
speak how it is uh, we used to say to our children when they were young when they were um, prone to give a fib or worse we wouldn't say oh stop lying to them we, we would say nathan abby tell it like it is you know, that was the way of um of getting them to d deal with maybe something they were trying to avoid by the lie or by the fib and as a church we need to be people of honesty i'm not saying please don't hear me wrong here i'm not saying oh let's all be brutal to one another and there are those people that love that you know they weigh in with oh i think this and i think that's just to upset people that's not i'm not talking about that but i am talking about sometimes we need to break the silence with truth about how things are and have an honest conversation that could end up positive and productive and constructive or it could be honest and depressing you know we've got to be sometimes facing the hard facts that's the first silence the second silence is um it says they uh, um, went to capernaum and jesus says then what what are you uh, arguing about he even says arguing so it gives them a chance and it says but they were silent for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest uh, i don't know if you remember dear old eric and ernie and this dance routine I haven't shown it all but you know the idea that they're kind of like forever being edged out by this bigger dance group and and and, and taken away from the limelight and they hate it i've i've used that video sometimes in like cafe churches to say how sometimes in in church life we're arguing about not in so many words but we are arguing about who's the greatest and and a lot of problems in the church let alone another sermon problems in the world are about i'm in charge hey listen to me what about my opinion and so on and not working together it's like vying for who's going to be greatest and um that just produces silence in the long run that people think i, I don't get on with that person i don't i can't address uh, the fact that we're not getting on uh, I, there is i know there is power struggles uh, i don't want to talk about those kind of things when i come to church and so sometimes people give up if that's what church is about just like a big headache <laughs> i'm not going to be there and who can blame them really i knew a lady once at uh, when i was in the northeast and her husband she used to come back crying from church meetings and, uh, and he said why do you go i mean you couldn't, you couldn't blame him could you um if if i mean crying if, if you're moved by something's fine but but crying if you're so upset with everybody who's so nasty you know let's remember that that what jesus wants well there's two things really what jesus wanted to say was uh, you know well we'll come to this in a minute uh, i'll show you what the greatness is but in the end although he wouldn't have said it in so many words what we need to remember is jesus is the greatest that's the really important thing jesus is the greatest and when we get that in the right order then everything can fall more clearly into place i don't say there won't be arguments or tricky moments but if we say you lord are the, the one who gives us the words of eternal life who else we're we going to go to then we've got the thing in the right order and that silence won't be about uh, difficulty and about not getting on and about vying it will be about following and, and contemplating and thinking praying and so the third silence which i kind of made up really is when 
Jesus says, I, I will show you what this is about. You people argue, really. Uh, and he brings a child into their midst. And then let's look at the text. He says, um, he took a little child and, and put this child among them. And taking this child in his arms, he said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Now, he's not saying every time you've got a child, you're welcoming Jesus in in, the, in that kind of rather uh, blanket sort of sense. But what he is saying is that when you look at a child, you're looking at what the kingdom should be like. Now, this is a difficult area because we, we can make this kind of a bit Valdunic and he couldn't we? And say that oh, it's all wonderful innocence and sweetness, childhood. We know it isn't. We know that children can be difficult and, and argumentative. But what we do know of, of, of children, and I don't mean necessarily teenagers here, I'm talking about a child, is that they, they live very much in the now. They are natural with with love. Uh, they They know how to... Uh, um, uh, be maybe in a tantrum one moment and express their feelings and then it's gone and then they're kind of not holding grudges it's 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 as we grow up and children are, sadly are growing up far too quickly into this nowadays I noticed that when I was in uh, um, doing mentoring kind of thing uh, counseling almost in a school situation how many of the kids as they've come up to the big school are falling out with their friends and staying fallen out that's an adult trait why should they be like that a child knows to, to have, have, a, have a, uh, um, a difficult situation with their friend and then be friends again but also a child most of all whether they like it or whether they don't are dependent they they absolutely are in the position of, of needing other people needing friends sure but needing parents and needing teachers and needing um, authority figures and needing uh, helpers and so on they are dependent that's why I think Jesus brought a child and not that you know because of the playfulness of children though in some ways that wouldn't be a bad thing to say uh, but because a child is reliant and 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 Jesus is saying don't fight amongst yourself so you're the big I am rely rest depend on me and I wonder then whether there was a moment where the, where the disciples just stopped and were quiet in that child's presence and considered what foolish grown-ups they were uh, there are bits in the Psalms in some of our Bibles when they translate the psalm and uh, every few verses it says Selah S-E-L-A-H Selah and uh, that means uh, well I'm, I'm sort of r roughly translating here stop pause and think and these moments of silence were actually moments for them to pause and think with a child in their midst what am I like as a disciple when they were quiet on the road and had been arguing is that the way to be a church to be in a fellowship with Jesus and when they had taken on or hadn't really I suppose taken on the the um, the news that Jesus was telling them that was difficult moments of silence but silence can be our friend if we use it to think positively and not just to become in a kind of recess and in a kind of wrong kind of hole in the wall you know kind of hiding away from the problems of life if we stop and think about these things and ask his blessing let's pray for a moment and then after my prayers we'll go straight into some visual uh, well visual in the sense that they've got some suggested prayers uh, uh, with some music for our intercessions father we thank you for jesus and the fact that he was able to um, guide people challenge people show them how things are meant to be lord in our churches and in our lives may we pause and think may we not just get in a mood and go silent may we not just be arguing and go silent may we remember what you're teaching us in this place in this moment and we ask this prayer in jesus name amen
So thank you for sharing with me in uh, today's uh, Sunday prayer. Uh, we're going to finish with a song made famous by the Vineyard Group, and I think this is a kind of children's version, but it's very pretty. Ah, oh, children's version, yes. How appropriate. Um, and it's, I think it was written for Christmas, but it, it applies about Jesus' life and ours the whole year round. It's simply called Humble King, and it says, May I be like you. I want to be like you, Jesus. How would that be if we were? So let me just say uh, a final prayer. Lord, help us to follow you as your children, loved and held by you. Help us to be natural in our discipleship and loving in our response. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us in this moment and with us always. Amen. down again here at your feet show me how much you love humility oh spirit be the star that leads me to the humble heart of love I see in you. You are the God of the broken, friend of the weak. You wash the feet of the weary, embrace the ones in and I want to be like you, Jesus, to have this heart in me. You are the God of the humble. You are the humble King. the heart